and the Total Sports Network. ESPN presents the 1982 United States Swimming Short Course National Championships. These championships are brought to you by the Brewers of Michelob Light. Compare the taste of Michelob Light to any beer you like. Hello everybody, I'm Leander Riley and welcome to the University of Florida in Gainesville. A milestone in United States swimming is about to be set. Tracy Calkins is about to establish a new mark, not only for women, but men combined with her accomplishments in swimming. We also have some American records that could be shattered by our individuals and some outstanding team results that you'll want to know about. And with us to share his expertise in the area of swimming is an assistant coach from the University of Alabama for both men and women, Brian Gordon. Brian, first elaborate on what Tracy Calkins could establish in this competition. Tracy Calkins in this four-day competition could very well become the winningest swimmer, male or female, in American championship history. Already in this competition, she's won the 200-yard backstroke to equal the legendary Johnny Weissmuller for career victories. With one more victory, she becomes the winningest swimmer ever. She'll have three opportunities to do it, the 400-yard individual medley, the 200-yard individual medley, or the 100-yard breaststroke. Personally, I feel the record's going to come early in her first swim, the 400-yard IM. Judging by what she said at the head of the show, I think she agrees with you, Brian. There's another young man who, one year ago, hung up his goggles, said he's had enough, he's finished outstandingly. Can he come back in the national championship? I'm talking, of course, about Rowdy Gaines. What's remarkable about Rowdy Gaines is he left on top. He was known as the fastest swimmer in the water, holding world and American records at 100 and 200 freestyle events. He's coming back, and he's not going to try it in just one event. He's going to try it in four different events, the 50, the 100, the 200, and the 500. 500-yard freestyle. He says he's in shape. We'll find out because he's certainly going to more than test himself. Rowdy Gaines may be the fastest human, but one of my favorites, Jill Circle, is going to try to lengthen her mark. She's never been defeated in the 50-yard freestyle by another American. But in this competition, she's going to face Lori Lehner and Dara Torres, so she might have her work cut out for her. There's a young man who is Dexide, a former All-American, and he's going to help us with our commentary. He swam right here for the University of Florida, Chuck Samuels. In these short course championships, the swimmers will be competing in a 25-yard pool. We won't see any world records. That's because FINA, the world governing body of swimming, does not recognize records in any course other than a 50-meter course. In the O'Connell Center here, there's movable bulkheads to accommodate either two 25-yard courses or a 50-meter course. During this championship, I'll be here poolside to talk with the winners and more. Lee? Thank you very much, Chuck Samuels. In addition to the milestone that could be set by Calkins, the unretirement of Rowdy Gaines, there are some other things at stake. Primarily, you said two things you wanted us to bring out. First. Two things, of course. Number one, this is the final testing ground before the World Championships coming up this summer in Guayaquil, Ecuador. This is the final chance for American swimmers to test where they stand in relation to other swimmers in this country. The trials will be held in Mission Viejo in July. Another thing we've got to look at is the team race. Mission Viejo has dominated the men's, the women's, and the combined races the last two meets. They should do that again here. But there are some other teams here, Cincinnati, Nashville, Florida Aquatics, and Industry Hills, to just name a few. So it sounds like the entire country is well represented, and it feels like the entire country is here and getting louder and rowdier, and well, they should be. RCA recording artist Alabama is here to sing our national anthem. Stripes and bright stars through the 
to their feet and setting a stage for some exciting competition. We're going to take a pause and we'll be back with our first event right after this. And we are ready now for our first event in these short course championships, the women's 200-yard freestyle. American and U.S. Open record is 144.1. Cynthia Woodhead set that mark in 1979. Sippy, Sippy Woodhead set that record. She's the top qualifier today. She had a relatively easy swim in the morning heats, and she has to be a heavy favorite in this race tonight. And we are ready now for our lane assignment, so let's turn it over to Chuck Samuels to tell us who's swimming in what lane. Swimming in the championship final of the women's 200-yard freestyle. In lane number one, the fourth place finisher in the 1,000-yard freestyle, the NCAA champion in this event, a freshman at Stanford University, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Mary Beth Lindsmeyer. In lane two, the fourth place finisher in the 200-yard butterfly, a high school senior from Walnut Creek, California, swimming for the Walnut Creek Aqua Bear, Sarah Linka. In lane three, swimming for the Federal Republic of Germany, Jutta Kohlweit. In lane number four, the American record holder in this event, the world record holder at 200 meters, a high school senior from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Cynthia Sippy Woodhead. In lane five, the third place finisher in the 200-yard backstroke, a high school junior from Mercer's Island, Washington, for the Chinook Aquatic Club, Mary Waite. In lane six, the defending champion, a member of the 1976 and 80 U.S. Olympic teams, a junior at the University of Texas, representing the Longhorn Aquatic Club, Jill Sterkel. In lane seven, the winner of the 1,000-yard freestyle, a high school sophomore from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Tiffany Cohen. And in lane number eight, the third place finisher in the 100-yard freestyle, a sophomore at Auburn University, swimming for the Bartow Imperial Flyers, Annie Lett. Sippy Woodhead in lane number four is the favorite, qualifying first. Jill Sterkel in lane number six, junior at Texas, defeated her in this race last year in Cambridge. If Sterkel were to have a chance, she's going to have to get out early, set the early pace, being a sprinter. If it's a slow pace race, look for the distance swimmers. Tiffany Cohen in seven, Mary Beth Linsmeyer in lane one, both representing Mission Viejo to benefit from a slow pace race. We have a false start, and they'll try it again. I believe it was lane five that pulled off. I couldn't really tell. He, he seemed to hold them, our starter, held them pretty long at the block. So. Once at this again. meet, in any type of meet of this caliber, we have the best starters in the country and some of the finest in the world. Their job is to make sure everyone has a fair start, and they're trying their hardest. There's not only a primary starter, but there'll be a backup starter there that can whistle or horn the swimmers back if they detect someone moving. And, of course, the referee can blow his whistle. So there's really three people watching for a false start. And you are watching Sippy Woodhead, the favorite in this event. 200-yard freestyle, eight lengths of the pool. And it is freestyle. The women are allowed to choose, actually, any stroke, technically, but the fastest one is, of course, front crawl. 
Woodhead, as mentioned, had a very easy time qualifying two seconds ahead of Mary Waite this morning, and she was in open water. We have, we have a lean on the start. Again, it was lane five. Uh, the first disqualification, I think, of our meet. I, now, I said she false started the first time. That has not been confirmed, but she definitely is the one who false started this time. It's Mary Waite. I see Dr. Stanley Brown, the meet referee, coming over, and she may very well have double false started out of the event. Oh. In short course swimming, you're allowed one false start. The second time, you're disqualified. In long course or 50-meter swimming, you're allowed That's two, it. and that was that two. So Mary Waite at the Chinook Aquatic Club. And that gives... Nice third in the backstroke earlier. Unfortunately, is out of this competition in the 20-yard freestyle. So that means there is an empty lane next to our favorite in this event, Sippy Woodhead. That's a great advantage to both Woodhead and her chief competitor, Sturkle, to have that open lane next to him, especially Sturkle, who likes to go out hard early, being the sprinter, and get the lead. Uh, Sturkle now, you can see her in the orange cap and the dark suit, flipped in the wall first. Looks like she has our lead after about 37 yards. 200-yard freestyle then. Jill Sterkel is the American record holder at 100, and she is going out to the early lead. She'll turn almost a half a second ahead at the 50, turning in about 24-5. Jill Sterkel now moving up Sippy Woodhead, the favorite in lane number four, the American record holder. And lane eight looks like Annie Lett is in third. So it is Sippy Woodhead, Jill Sterkel, Annie Lett. One, two, and three after 75 yards. We're looking for 50.58. That's the American record pace set in East Los Angeles in 1979 by Sippy Woodhead. Looks like Woodhead and Sterkle right about even. We're and about it is. It's awfully close to call. We'll have to watch for the splits, but these two swimmers are really giving a race for themselves. Woodhead just a touch ahead of Sterkle now and opening up is Jill starting to falter as they go into 125. They're about a half a second above the record pace. Sterkle coming back off that wall. She's much bigger, Leandra, and can turn a little bit better than Sippy Woodhead and using her size to an advantage with 50 to go. And it is still Sippy Woodhead that you are watching right there off the wall first, ahead of Jill Sterkle in second, third place still, Annie Leth of Barco Imperial Flyers in lane eight. One, two, three in the 200-yard freestyle. Eight tenths off the American record at 150, and Woodhead is really opening up as she hits her final turn. It is still Sippy Woodhead. Jill Circle second, Annie Lett, one, two, and three, but we do have a challenge coming from lane two, Sarah Linka, Walnut Creek Aqua Bear. She's making a strong bid for third and has overtaken Annie Lett. We're and not going to have a record, but a great swim by Sippy Woodhead. And it is Sippy Woodhead with a 145.46. That is an unofficial time. Sippy Woodhead, the one we said would win. There you see her time officially, 145.46. Our winner, second place going to lane six, Jill Circle. Third place going to lane two. Sarah Link of the Walnut Creek Aqua Bears. Jill tried to make a run last year at Cambridge. She came on in that last 50 to overtake Sippy. She tried to make that move again. Let's watch the finish again as Jill Sterkel in the lower part of your picture in lane six trying to make a run here as they come into the final five yards on Sippy Woodhead. Woodhead puts her head down and really comes in strong to the finish, winning in a time of 145.46, about five tenths of a second ahead of Jill Sterkel winning that race. Chuck Samuels down at poolside with our winner, Sippy Woodhead. Sippy, it's been a year since you've been in the winner's circle. It certainly has to feel good to win this one. I'm real happy. I can't even say. It's been a year of learning experiences. I can be happier right now. Are you a little displeased with your time? It's not too close to your record. I can't say I'm displeased because I haven't won in a year. So winning is something you gotta always be happy about, and that's one of the things I learned. Real special. Hey, thank you, Sippy, and congratulations on your win in the 200-yard freestyle. Back to you, Leandra. And she is something special. Sippy Woodhead, her winning time, 145.46. Here are confirmed finals: Cynthia Woodhead, Jill Sterkle, Sarah Linka, winning the women's 200-yard freestyle event. In the men's 200-yard freestyle event, Rowdy Gaines holds the U.S. Open in American records 133.8. Chuck Samuels is ready now for our lane assignments. The championship finalist in the men's 200-yard freestyle, swimming in lane number one. The third place finisher in the 200-meter freestyle at last year's long course championships, a senior at the University of Florida, swimming for the Florida Aquatic Swim Team, John Hillenkamp. In lane number two, a member of the 1980 United States Olympic team, the second place finisher at last year's championships, a sophomore at the University of Southern California, swimming for the Santa Clara Swim Club, 
Chris Kavanaugh. In lane three, the second place finisher in the 200 yard free at the recent NCAA championships, a senior at Auburn University, swimming for the Florida Aquatic Swim Team, Steve Wood. In lane number four, the American record holder in both the 100 and 200 yard freestyles, world record holder in the 100 and 200 meter freestyles, winner of the 100 in this meet, after a year in retirement, he attends Auburn University swimming for the War Eagle swim team, Rowdy Gaines. In lane five, the 16th place finisher at last year's long course championships, a sophomore at Texas, Swimming for the Longhorn Aquatic Club, John Smith. In lane six, the 12th place finisher last year, a sophomore at the University of Florida, representing the Florida Aquatic Swim Team, Jeff Gabarino. In lane seven, the fourth place finisher from last year's championships, a high school senior from Mission Viejo, California, representing the Mission Viejo Natadores, Rich Sager. And in lane eight, a member of the 1980 Australian Olympic team, a sophomore at the University of Iowa, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Graham Brewer. Rowdy Gaines, the top qualifier, American record holder in lane four. If you're looking for a challenge, Chris Cavanaugh, second in the 100 earlier in the meet. Chris likes to come on late in the race. The most consistent 200 freestyler in the country this year has been Auburn Steve Wood, representing fast in lane three as they go in the water for a false start. Look for Wood and Kavanaugh to perhaps give the greatest challenge in this race, but Jeff Gabarino in lane six, John Smith in lane five, both capable of winning this race. Something interesting, Leandro, when Roddy Gaines set his American and U.S. Open record, it was right here in this pool at the Southeastern Conference Collegiate Championships a year ago. He did not better that at the NCAAs. This, he likes his pool very much. Okay, it looks like we're ready for our second start. Lane two, I believe he said, we have a false start. That is Chris Cavanaugh, one of the challengers for lane four, Roddy Gaines. Uh, Rowdy Gaines, the SEC Athlete of the Year, who set records in 1981, spoke with us about an unusual situation. He retired. He retired when he was on top, but he said he had reasons for his comeback. He's out in front, and I think he's... I guess uh, I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm not real sure. Uh, I, I, this summer, I just, you know, I looked at the times at, at the Nationals, and they just weren't that good. And, I, you know, I thought to myself, wow, you know, I could still be out there winning. And uh, that's the main reason why I'm swimming, is because I like to win. And, you know, I just enjoy it. I, uh, I don't enjoy working that hard, but I enjoy going to the meets. I enjoy the people. I enjoy the trips. And uh, that's what I miss most about it. Rowdy Gaines is ahead of a record pace right here as he's at 45.70 at the 100. The record split was 46.03, so he's about three-tenths ahead of that. His challenge now coming in lane number five from John Smith of Longhorn and Steve Wood of Fast in lane number three. Lane four out in front, closest challengers, lane three and five. So we have a perfect arrowhead, but we do have a good performance in the outside lane by Graham Brewer, but still it is Rowdy Gaines, the man without the cap in the center of the pool, out in front by say, ooh, a second and a, and a share. This is the home. See, we're coming in the wall with a, a, a fine performance. Rowdy Gaines coming in very strong. Second place going to lane three. First place, Rowdy Gaines. Second place, Steve Wood. Third place, John Smith. That is unofficial. First place, Rowdy Gaines, 135-17, not quite a mark. No, Gaines had a good swim. He seemed to get tired, took it out the first 100 like he likes to do, nice and strong, taking second in that race, Steve Wood of Auburn. So actually, Richard Quick, the Auburn coach, went 1-2 there, because although Steve Wood is representing Florida Aquatics here, he's a senior at Auburn University. Third, coming up strong at the end, was Jeff Gabarino, a sophomore here at the University of Florida in lane six. There you see Rowdy Gaines' time as he congratulates his former collegiate teammate Steve Wood 135 17 and let's watch the finish again note Gabarino coming on strong here for third and Wood of course to the left of Gaines in lane three Gaines finishing first John Smith in lane five being passed by Wood and then Gabarino for the finish there in the 200 free 
Rowdy Gaines continues to be on top, winning early of the 100 and now the 200. And Leandra, he definitely seems to be on pace towards his goal of getting to the 84 Moscow Olympics. He's certainly coming out of retirement in style. Chuck Samuels is standing by with our winner in the men's 200-yard freestyle, Rowdy Gaines. Rowdy, when we talked before the meet, you sounded a little unsure of whether you were doing the right thing by making a comeback. Surely this win, coupled with your win in the Hunter Freestyle, has to tell you you're doing the right thing. Well, it feels good. I've taken off for a year. It really, it just seems so weird. I feel kind of by myself now, and not so much with the team as I was with Auburn. But uh, it feels good to be back. It really does. Do you feel you're right on track for the world championships? I think so. I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't train as hard as I wanted to this fall and winter. And uh, when I get back for spring, it's going to be all over with. I'm going to train my hardest. And what about the Olympic Games in the future? Well, if I swim well this summer, when I swim well this summer, uh, I'll be ready for 84, I think. I, uh, 25 is a little old, but uh, only in your mind, I guess. Rowdy, congratulations. You're still the best around. A year off or what? Back to you, Leandra. Rowdy Gaines, 25 to old. I don't think for him. Rowdy Gaines winning the 200-yard freestyle. Steve Wood taking second. Jeff Gabarino finishing third. We have more swimming coming up in these short course championships. Please don't go away. Winner of 36 U.S. national titles at 19 years of age and in just five years of swimming, this woman is about to accomplish what no swimmer has ever accomplished before, winning more national titles than any person, man or woman, has ever done before. And Brian, I, I understand you're a big fan of Tracy's. As far as I'm concerned, Tracy Calkins is the finest swimmer ever to compete in competitive swimming, man or woman. You have Johnny Weissmuller, whose record she will break tonight. She's tied with him right now. You have people like Mark Spitz in the early 70s, great females like Shane Gould, Debbie Meyer, uh, Don Fraser in the late 50s, early 60s. No one has so dominated this sport as Tracy Calkins has. As far as I'm concerned, Tracy Calkins, if she trained for it, could win any event there is. Spitz was only a flyer freestyler. Tracy has the American record in IMs, backstrokes, freestyles, breaststrokes. As far as I'm concerned, she's the best. She was even quite a flyer at one time. She's a 1978 Sullivan Award winner. She was chosen Sportswoman of the Year, amateur athlete. She's uh, just an outstanding individual. And, and in spite of all the accolades that have been bestowed upon her, she is really a humble individual. She's proud of her sister Amy, who swims at Florida. She's proud of her fellow teammates at the National Aquatic Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Also proud of the team here at Florida. She's just a real humble individual and team swimmer. She's had some great coaches, her current Nashville coach Ron Young and of course Randy Reese here at Florida and Paul Bergen her first real major coach and Don Talbert everyone comes away praising the world about Tracy Calkins and she says the same thing about each one of them Tracy is now ready to swim in our next event which is the 400 yard individual medley no surprise here the US Open and American record is held by Tracy 404 63 that record could be broken tonight Chuck Samuels is standing by with our lane assignments Swimming in the championships of the women's 400-yard individual medley. In lane one, the ninth place finisher at last year's championships, a high school junior from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Natadores, Vera Barker. In lane two, last year's 11th place finisher, a member of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team, a high school senior from Doylestown, Pennsylvania, Swimming for the Germantown Academy Aquatic Club, Karen LaBerge. In lane number three, the defending champion and American record holder in this event, a freshman at the University of Florida, going for the all-time number 37, swimming for the Nashville Aquatic Club, Tracy Calkins. In lane four, the second place finisher at last year's championships, a high school senior from Westchester, Pennsylvania, swimming for the Westchester Swim Club, Patty Gavin. In lane five, the second place finisher in the 200 yard breaststroke, a high school senior from Ellicott City, Maryland, swimming for the Germantown Academy Aquatic Club, Holly Windy. In lane six, representing West Germany, Petra Zindler. In lane seven, Last year's fourth place finisher, a freshman at the University of Arizona, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Diane Erson. And in lane number eight, 
The 10th place finisher of the 200-yard breaststroke, a high school sophomore from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Shannon Hermstock. Tracy Calkins is Chuck Samuels announced in lane three top qualifier this morning, Patty Gavin of the Westchester Suburban Swim Club in Philadelphia, primarily a butterfly or backstroker. Those are her strong events in lane four. Second qualifier in lane five, Polly Windy of Germantown Academy, also in Philadelphia, a very strong breaststroker. And we have a false start, and it's by Tracy Calkins. Your lanes are numbered from the top of your screen to the bottom of your screen, one through eight. There's Tracy now. Patty Gavin's a fine swimmer, the top qualifier in lane four. All the accolades have gone to Tracy, and uh, necessarily so, but Patty has been overshadowed a little bit. She's probably the second best 400 IMer we have in this country, and one of the finest in the world. Last summer, over in the USSR USA dual meet, which was held over in Kiev, Russia, Patty won the 400 IM. Tracy elected not to go to that meet. She enrolled here at Florida instead and started classes. But Patty Gavin picked up the ball, uh, the ball for the USA and did a credible job. So don't think that Tracy has an easy task here tonight. Patty Gavin, 17 years old. Tracy Calkins, 19 years of age. In fact, Tracy's the old lady in this event. Nice clean start, second time around. Tracy's in the water nicely, swimming in lane three. Patty Gavin swimming in lane four. Polly Windy in lane five in the center of your pool. And it looks to me like Tracy, after 25 yards, is our leader. If we're looking for a Calkins record, she's a great butterfly, a great backstroker. The area she has to improve on her record splits is the breaststroke. When she set her record, she was not, uh, rather on her backstroke, I'm sorry. When she set her record, she was 102 last year in Cambridge. For Coach Ron Young feels she has to be one double O. Tracy Calkins in front, Patty Gavin second, Polly Windy third, Johnny Weissmiller took seven years, Tracy Calkins took just five. And she talked to me earlier and told me that the record has been pressing on her mind but not distracting her. It would really be an honor if I broke Johnny Weissmiller's national title record, but I'm really not trying to think about that. It is a little bit of added pressure, so I'm just going to try to think about my individual swims as they come up, because it's not going to be easy by any means, and I just want to do the best I can in each swim. Tracy Calkins was 56-34 at the butterfly point. That's two-tenths of a second ahead of her American record pace set last year in Boston. She needs to be better than 158.5 at the end of the backstroke. Her coach, Ron Young, said she's gearing to be about 1-0 here. Once again, to set our placements, Tracy Calkins, lane three out in front. Patty Gavin, lane four, second. Holly Windy, third. Tra there you see the running splits at the halfway of the backstroke. Again, we're looking for 158.5 after this turn and the completion of the lap tracy a very strong backstroker but starting to move into the picture in lane number four patty gavin who was second behind tracy earlier in the 200 yard backstroke again 158.5 is the record split but we're looking for tracy to be in the neighborhood of 156.3 that's where her coach wanted her in the swim and she's coming into the wall now let's see what her split turns out to be she's like she's a little bit off the mark she's definitely in control of this race going into the breaststroke she's above record pace be, be very 159.3 was her split at the end of the backstroke. Tracy looks very much in control of the race. It will be very difficult to make up ground in the breaststroke, even though it's her specialty. It's going to be very tough to break her American record. So Tracy Calkins is still out in front. Patty Gavin, her closest driver, but we do have a battle going on for third. In fact, Polly Windy in lane five looks like she might make a move for second place. But don't count out Karen LaBerge in lane two. She's making a strong bid also. Polly Windy is a breaststroker and a freestyler. This is where she has to attack Patty Gavin and also her teammate. There's the battle for third right there between the white cap, Patty Gavin of Westchester, and the red cap, Polly Windy. You see another red cap moving up. That's Karen LaBerge, Windy's teammate. All three of the swimmers battling for second and third are from the Philadelphia area. And Tracy Calkins is still moving well out in front. As you said, we do have a strong battle for second place. Right now it belongs to lane five, Polly Windy. Looks like she has made the move to take over second place. Tracy Calkins still out in front. Our clock shows about 308, 309, 310. There you can see it. Let's see what her split is, Brian. I had her about 110 point. 311.86, as you can see, is her actual split at the end of the breaststroke leg. Again, she's very much in control of the race, but she probably will have a tough time eclipsing her American record. Polly Windy definitely in control in second in lane five and moving up. 
In third right now, still in lane four, Patty Gavin of Westchester. And Tracy Hawkins in the freestyle event. She still has two more lengths after she touches the wall here. Second place, lane five, Polly Wendy. And the crowd is starting to rise to her feet to cheer Tracy on because she has no real competition out there. Wendy's coming up. She's making a move a little too late, but she's definitely making a run at Tracy. But Tracy sees her coming here. Tracy is breathing to the side that Wendy has as they come off the turn for the final lap. Tracy in control of the race, but Wendy with a great swim going. You'll notice that Tracy was breathing on her left side going down. She's breathing on her right coming back so she can keep an eye on Wendy. Now she's going back to her left arm breathing. She better look back to the right. Wendy's coming on strong, but it is Tracy talking. The winner, Polly Wendy, finishing second. Third place going to lane four, Patty Gavin. So Tracy Hawkins has now beaten Johnny Weissmiller's national title record of 36 national crowns. Tracy has just surpassed in America with 37 national titles, a feat never matched by male or female in this country before. I thought that, as we get a standing ovation here, I thought that smile would never come. I'm sure Tracy is very happy with the performance. She just wanted to win that race, get all this talk out of the way. Mm -hmm. I think we've got to point out Polly Windy with a career best, 413-16 for second, and a fine swim by Patty Gavin for third. As you see, Polly Windy in the red cap, her back to you, and Tracy Calkins with the NAC for Nashville, winning her 37th title and surpassing a tie with Johnny Weissmuller as the winningest swimmer ever in national competition. So Tracy Hawkins is getting ready to step up with our Chuck Samuels. The crowd was so pleased with her performance, and I believe Chuck is ready. Tracy, there's been so much hoopla surrounding this feat, beating the record, 37 national titles. You have to be as much relieved as you are happy, are you? Yeah, I guess it does take a little bit of the pressure off. And I was just really pleased with the win. I knew that those girls, Polly and Patty, would be really tough in this event. And I was just hoping to do a little bit better time than I've done this season and um, really do a good job for Nashville. Did you see Polly Wendy coming up on you that last hundred? Yeah, she really came on strong, and I knew both of them had a really strong freestyle leg. This morning, that's why I was really slow, so I was very much aware of where Polly was. What kind of feet do you go for next? I'm just gonna keep on trying to improve and better myself in any way that I can. Tracy, I've got to say it couldn't happen to a nicer person. Congratulations. How true it is. Tracy Calkins, winner of 37 national titles. And the results of the 400-yard individual medley. Tracy Calkins finishing first, Polly Windy finishing second, and Patty Gavin third, winning time 411.75. We are ready now for the men's 400-yard individual medley. Individual medley men's final championship US Open American record held by Jesse Visayo. The women have set an exciting precedent Let's see if the men can match it. So Jesse Visayo is in this event and Chuck Samuels is standing by now to tell us what lane He and all the other individuals are swimming in The finalists in the 400 yard individual medley for men in lane number one the eighth place finisher at last year's championship the two-time national champion in the 200-meter backstroke, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Steve Barnico. In lane two, the third-place finisher in the 1,000-yard freestyle, a freshman at UCLA, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Bruce Hayes. In lane three, the defending champion and American record holder in this event, the world record holder in the 400-meter individual medley, a sophomore at the University of Miami, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Jesse Visayo. In lane four, the second place finisher at last year's championships, a high school senior from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Natadores, Ricardo Prado. In lane five, the 10th place finisher from last year's championships, a high school senior, in Cockeysville, Maryland, swimming for the North Baltimore Aquatic Club, Patrick Kennedy. In lane six, the fourth place finisher in the 1,000-yard freestyle, a high school junior in Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Roger Madruga. In lane seven, the third place finisher in the 200-yard butterfly, a senior at Southern Illinois University, representing Southern Illinois, Roger Von Juan. And in lane eight, the winner of the 1,000-yard freestyle in American record time, a high school junior from Upland, California, swimming for the Industry Hills Aquatic Club, Jeff Kostoff.
Ricardo Prado, top qualifier in lane four. Jesse Visayo, American record holder in lane number three. Prado, a heavy favorite in this race. Jesse Visayo was upset in the NCAA championships. Has not really swam a good 400 IM yet this year. Outside possibility, outside lane. Lane one, Steve Barnico. And we have a nice clean start. We have five or four swimmers, rather, from Mission Viejo. Lanes one, two, three, four, and six. All from the Mission Viejo Natadores. What a powerful club they are. Mark Schubert has long stressed A, distance swimming, B, versatility in all strokes. And it shows here in a distance event for all strokes, the 400 IM. Another guy I did not have a chance to mention before the start, who always seems to be there, a consistent swimmer, Southern Illinois University Saluki senior Roger Von Juan, who's swimming in lane number seven, and is right up there at the bottom of your picture competing for the lead. Ricardo Prado is a leader in lane four. Patrick Kennedy is in lane five. And at the bottom of your screen, Roger Von Juan of SIU. Looks like, well, he's in a tight battle for third place. These guys are still close, even though we're almost at the end of the butterfly leg of this 400 individual medley. Prado turning first, 53-1-4, just slightly ahead of American record pace, which was 53-1-4. Vasayo and Patrick Kennedy on both sides of the current leader, Prado, are backstrokers. Vasayo, I was say, Vasayo, you recall, that's the record in this event. 348-16, Jesse Vasayo swimming in lane number three. But right now, he and teammate Ricardo Prado are doing battle for the lead with the edge right now up to 50 meters, or 50 yards rather, of backstroke going to Prado. There's really not a real great breaststroker in the field. Sometimes a good breaststroker determines the victor in this event. But Sia was a good breaststroker, not a great breaststroker. Right now, he's even with Prado. The record split is 149-3 at the end of the backstroke. Barnacote now and won a backstroker moving up to contend. Kennedy, also a bona fide national class backstroker in five, is right now third. But Prado is still holding off for Sayo. What do you see our split? I see 150.02 for lane three, Jesse Vasayo. We enter about seven tenths off the record pace. If Prado stays with Vasayo throughout the breaststroke, he will win the race. He right now is probably in better over distance shape. This is his first taper and shave. Jesse had a taper and shave for his conference in the NCAAs. They're dead even with about 150 to go. Third place still up for grabs. Pat Kennedy in lane five. Roger Von Juan in seven. Jesse Vasayo at the top of your screen. Ricardo Prado towards the bottom most end. That is Ricardo Prado that you're looking at now. Prado, one of the most sought-after high school seniors, probably the most, one of the most sought-after since the man to his left, Jesse Vasayo. What a battle we have here in the breaststroke. Uh, Ten yards remaining in this leg of the race. They still have 100 yards freestyle. 254.7 was the record split. Right now, Prado two seconds off at 256.1, 256.4, second Vasayo. But Prado is opening up with 75 to go. Ricardo Prado is taking over the lead. Jesse Vasayo is settling back for second place. And down in lane number seven, Roger Von Juan of SIU. Looks like he's starting to take control of third place. Ricardo Prado, a bona fide distance swimmer also, turning well with 50 to go and really has a lot left. Remember the record 348-16. That probably isn't in jeopardy, but Ricardo Prado is holding off Vasayo. Roger Von Juan, it looks like he's making a strong bid for second place, and I don't think Jesse Vasayo sees him. Roger Von Juan swimming in lane number seven. As they come to the finish, Prado opening up on Vasayo, and you were right, here comes Von Juan. Jesse not breathing. Now he breathes both sides as Prado comes in first. That's a record. He did set the record, so we do have a record broken here in the men's 400-yard individual medley. Ricardo Prado, the record 348-16, the U.S. Open record 348-16. Jesse Vasayo said it, Ricardo Prado, the Mission VA on Nadadores. 347.97. Prado came on so strong in the freestyle. I had ridden him off with 50 to go, Leandra. He came home hard in that freestyle, about 52 low for that freestyle split. 347.97. That is a U.S. Open record. Ricardo is from Brazil. That is not an American record. To get his reaction, here's Chuck Samuels. Ricardo, you won an American record time, your first national championship. Did you think you could go that fast? Um, 
Well, I, I was, I was hoping because uh, Jesse has beaten me for last, uh, in the last two nationals. I, I was second behind Jesse, but this year I, I really wanted to win and maybe break a record, and it finally paid off. So you think having Jesse swim at night right next to you, pushing you all the way, helps you to the record and the win? Oh, definitely. So, uh, let me see what's his time, Mom. Yeah, he's. He's like two seconds off his best time, but uh, we'll meet again at the World Championships. Okay, thank you very much. Congratulations. Fine performance by Ricardo Prado, setting a new U.S. Open record. Let's take another look at that performance. 25 to go, and Ricardo really came on strong here. Look at him pick up the kick. He will not breathe every stroke. He's breathing almost every third or fourth stroke, really burying his head as he comes in the final five yards. He just barely got under the record, under the flags here. And a new U.S. Open, Ricardo, being from Brazil, cannot set an American record, but sets a U.S. Open record. And there are the results of the men's 400-yard individual medley, Ricardo Prado, Jesse Vasayo, Roger Von Juan, 1, 2, and 3, winning time and record time, 347.97. We'll be back with more swimming. Stay tuned. Reported O'Connell Center at the University of Florida in Gainesville, Florida, site of three days of ESPN televised swimming competition condensed into two shows, individual events that you are watching now, and there will be a relay competition that you can check your cable guide for here on ESPN. Great swimming at this U.S. Swimming Short Course Championships, and we are ready now for our women's 200-yard individual medley. That'll be our next event. The U.S. Open and American record is held by Tracy Calkins. 157.11 is her time, and I had a chance to talk with her earlier about her age and how long she plans to stay in the competition. You're 19 years old. Are you going to go for 1984? Well, I think that um, that image of the women retiring from swimming at 18 or 19 is really changing. Hallelujah. Um, you're seeing the college women do a lot better just this year. The NC2As and the AIWs were fast meets. And at the college level, the training for the women is a lot better. And you're seeing women do well at age 20, 21, 22. So I don't feel that, you know, I'm washed up or I've peaked. I think I can still improve. And it's so good to see those girls in their doing well and my sister is a prime example of one of those swimmers she had her best season at age 20 and is doing better every year and and it used to be where the 14 15 16 year olds were doing really well and I think those 14 15 16 year olds are now 18 19 20 and they're still wanting to do well and I think that has a lot to do with it what about 84 for Tracy Calkins well um, I think as I'm still enjoying swimming the way I am now and doing well, I'm going to try for sure, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'll be trying for it. I certainly hope so. A pensive look on Tracy Calkins' face, 200 yard back, 400 IM, winner of 37 national titles, Chuck Samuels. Next up, the Women's Championship 200 yard individual medley. Swimming in lane number one. The second place finisher in the 200-yard butterfly, a high school junior from Nashville, Tennessee, swimming for the Nashville Aquatic Club, Patty King. In lane two, making her first appearance in the championship finals, a high school sophomore from Austin, Texas, representing the Longhorn Aquatic Club, Karen Worth. In lane three, the second place finisher in the 200-yard breaststroke, a high school senior from Ellicott City, Maryland, Representing the North Baltimore Aquatic Club, Polly Windy. In lane four, the all-time champion of American swimming, the defending champion and American record holder in this event, a freshman at the University of Florida, swimming for her hometown Nashville Aquatic Club, Tracy Calkins. In lane five, just out of the 500-yard freestyle and winner of the 200-yard freestyle, a high school senior from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Cynthia Sippy Woodhead. In lane six, the second place finisher in the 200-yard backstroke, finished second in this event last year, a high school senior from Westchester, Pennsylvania, swimming for the Westchester Swim Club, Patty Gavin. 
In lane seven, a high school senior from Westchester, Pennsylvania, also from the Westchester Swim Club, Lisa McLean. And in lane eight, swimming in her first United States Swimming National Championship meet, a high school freshman from Fair Oaks, California, representing the Fair Oaks swim team, Monica Nielbeck. Is Tracy Calkins going for her third victory in the meet. She won this event by five seconds last year without a challenge. Next to her in lane five will be Sippy Woodhead trying to double out of the 500 free just moments, finished moments ago. And there's Patty Gavin. She was third in the 400 IM last, earlier in this meet. And we have a false start in an event like this. You can see why nerves are a little bit more unsteady. Incidentally, Polly Windy swims for Germantown. And you'll notice as you look at Tracy Calkin, you notice she shook her head when she was announced to the starting blocks in lane three. That's because Polly Windy was inadvertently announced as swimming for North Baltimore Aquatic Club, but she really swims for Germantown. So let's give credit where credit is due. In the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, you notice again, Tracy went in. Tracy, that's a nervous habit. She always seems to fall start, likes to get wet. So does her teammate. I noticed that uh, Patty King, also from Nashville, jumped in with her. I have to go back to Nashville and talk to them about that. <laughs> I will. If we're looking for an American record, Tracy's split is 25-8 at the end of the 50 fly leg. Tracy is probably the best in the field, fly back and breast. If she had a weakness, believably so, it's the freestyle. At least the sprint freestyle, because if Sippy Woodhead is there with 50 free to go, she'll be a factor. Tracy Calkins will be doing two lengths, as will all the swimmers, two lengths of each stroke, butterfly, bat, breast, and then the freestyle. So her, her weak length, if you could call it, that will be her last one. And her pace after 50 is 25-8. She's right on her on her mark she'll be looking to be about 55 7 which means a 27 or a 26 high on the 50 back leg coming up moving up right now in lane number six is patty gavin who's known primarily for a backstroke and in lane number seven as we look at the split 55 3 she's ahead of american record pace watch for lisa mclean of westchester swim club in lane seven to make a move also in the breaststroke but there is tracy calkins all by herself by her body length. She's just chasing the clock, really. She is way out ahead of everybody. So Tracy Calkins is out in front. Second place right now is, I would have to say, a toss-up between Polly Windy and lane number six, Patty Gavin. They're really neck and neck with Karen Worth making her move also. 129-2 is the split we're looking for as you look head on as Tracy makes her turn. 50 free to go, and she's just above it by almost a second with 50 free to go. Polly Windy really came on strong in the breast and is really making a strong move in the free just like she did in the 400 IM. And Patty Gavin is making a move also in the freestyle. Polly Windy, though, has second place sewn up, but Tracy Calkins just way out in front, but you're right, she was a body length ahead, and now we see that she's losing ground to Polly Windy, and look at Cynthia Woodhead, Woodhead's really coming on strong, Woodhead, if there was five more yards, might have overtaken Calkins, Calkins won it, Woodhead second, and Polly Windy finishing third, what a finish by Sippy Woodhead, but Tracy Calkins had enough ground in front of her, 158.94, what a finish by Tracy Calkins. As we said earlier, as you look at her winning time, not as impressive as her record, but it's a victory. And Tracy winning her third. Sippy Woodhead's got to be happy with the 159.6. That's her best time. And as we said at the outset of the race, if it got close with her weakness being the free, the girl that could catch it and take advantage would be Sippy Woodhead. But she started just a little bit too late. There's Tracy seemingly by herself. Seemingly, no one there, there's the right? hand at the bottom of the screen. You can see Sippy's... Sippy's coming in, they're reaching each time, getting closer. And Sippy driving for the wall. Tracy puts her head down, touches here about a, a body length ahead of Sippy, who finishes strong. Tracy just about a second ahead of Sippy Woodhead, but quite a remarkable feat for Sippy because she just moments ago finished the 500s. As you see Tracy warming down. And our final results in the women's 200-yard individual medley event, Tracy Calkins finishing first with a 158.94. Second place went to Cynthia Sippy Woodhead, and third place went to Polly Windy of Germantown. One, two, and three in the 200-yard IM. The men's 200-yard individual medley final is about to take place. U.S. Open and American record is held by Bill Barrett. 
1982, he set that American record, 145-00. And now Chuck Samuels is ready for our lane assignments. Swimming in the championship of the men's 200-yard individual medley. In lane number one, the seventh place finisher at last year's Long Force Championship, a sophomore at the University of Texas, swimming for the Badger Swim Club, Bill Stafford. In lane two, a former national champion in the 200-meter individual medley, a sophomore at the University of Southern California, representing the Santa Clara Swim Club, Chris Cavanaugh. In lane three, the third place finisher in the 200-yard butterfly and 400-yard IM, a senior at Southern Illinois, representing Southern Illinois University, Roger Von Juan. In lane four, he has 15 national titles to his credit, a sophomore at the University of Miami, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Jesse Visayo. In lane five, he recently broke the national high school record in this event, a high school senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, representing the Pepsi Marlins, Mark Rodenbaugh. In lane six, a member of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team, a former national champion in the 200-meter breaststroke, a junior at Stanford, swimming unattached, John Simons. In lane seven, the winner of the 400-yard IM in U.S. Open time, a native of Brazil, a high school senior from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Natadores, Ricardo Prado. And in lane eight, the fifth place finisher in the 400 IM, a high school senior from Cockeysville, Maryland, swimming for the North Baltimore Aquatic Club, Patrick Kennedy. Without Bill Barrett, the world's best in this event, it could be anybody's race. Lane two, Chris Cavanaugh in 1980 was the top finisher at the Olympic trials. He will finish extremely strong in freestyle. And lane three, Roger Von Juan of Southern Illinois is probably one of the most consistent swimmers in the country. He was third in NCAAs. Great start there by Jesse Visayo in lane four as he really got off well on that beat. Jesse Fasayo, the swimmer without a cap in the center of your pool. To his left is the swimmer from SIU, Roger Von Juan. Right now it is Von Juan and Rodenbaugh that are out in front. Fasayo trading a little bit, I'd say, by quarter of a body length. Mark Rodenbaugh is a high school senior with the Cincinnati Pepsi Marlins. Earlier this year he set a national high school record breaking the record held by the swimmer in lane two, Chris Kavanaugh, formerly of Santa Clara High School. If you're looking for someone to make a move in the breaststroke, John Simon made our Olympic team in 1980 basically on the strength of his breaststroke. Still anybody's race. John Simons is a swimmer in lane number six with a bright white swim cap on. Let's see what their splits are after the backstroke. Well over the American record, a bunch of 51s and 52s. The record was 49 flat. Vasayo now in the middle of the pool starting to assert himself. Also Roger Von Juan in lane number three. So it is Jesse Vasayo out in front, Mark Rodenbaugh, and Roger Von Juan. I'd have to say in a dead heat for second place, but it is still Vasayo. You're looking at him now in front by about a yard or two. John right Simons. Now, Simons, as you said in the breaststroke, he's coming up and he's challenging Vasayo. And he's got a better than average freestyle. John Simons is in great shape right now. Simons and six at the bottom of your picture now, Vasayo and Von Juan starting to take off and moving up back into the picture. Mark Rodenbauer, five, coming up right there. It is still Vasayo out in front, but he pushed off simultaneously with Roger Von Juan. It is still Vasayo, but oh, we've got a strong bid now in the freestyle. It is still Vasayo, but now it is Rodenbauer taking up and look at Roger Von Juan. Von Juan, Von Juan won it. Second place, Rodenbauer and Vasayo came in third. What a strong finish by Roger Von Juan to play third in the 20 yard fly, third in the 400 IM earlier in this meet. The senior from SIU winning the 200 yard individual medley. Roger Von Juan has been labeled probably unnecessarily so. There he is, very happy. He's letting off a lot of emotion. He's a senior and he's done with his career probably after this. Roger was always labeled as the guy who would have a great time early in the season, but as the season progressed, he wouldn't improve at the end of the year. He disproved that theory this year. He swam very well in the Southern Independent Conference, uh, National Independent Collegiate Championships, as his coach Bob Steele hugs him right there, swam very well at NCAAs, and swam well here, winning his first ever national title here. Let's watch the finish again. Roger Von Juan holding off Mark Rodenbaugh, 
in lane number five and coming on John Simons. Here you can see Von Juan at the finishing top. at the very top. Coming in is Rodenba and Visayo and Simons and Ricardo Prado at the very bottom. But Von Juan, the clear winner. Chuck's, uh, Chuck Samuels is on the pool deck with our winner, Roger Von Juan. Roger, you've been second more times than we could count. It must feel great to win that first one. Well, I've never even been second. I've been third a heck of a lot of times. It does feel really great. <laughs> I just praise the Lord for what he's done for me, man. You, you came on strong that last 50. Did you have any idea you won when you touched? Not until I touched, because I didn't open my eyes in the last lap. <laughs> well, I was afraid and, afraid and stroked and touched and kind of took a glance up there. And I was real happy. <laughs> well, that was a great swim, and congratulations. Almost a disbelieving look on the face of Roger Von Juan, the winner of the men's 200-yard individual medley. His time, 148.41. Second place went to Mark Rodenbaugh from the Cincinnati Pepsi Marlins. Third place went to Jesse Vasayo from the Mission Viejo Matadores. Don't blink. Our next event is quicker than a commercial. It's a 50-yard freestyle women's final. Joel Sterkel holds the U.S. Open an American record. 22 seconds. 22.41 is that record. Chuck Samuels, please tell us who's swimming where. In the championship of the women's 50-yard freestyle, in lane one, 11th place finisher from last year's championships, attends North Carolina State University, swimming for Sweet Acidophilus Milk, Beth Emery. In lane two, last year's 13th place finisher, a high school senior from McLean, Virginia, representing the Solitar swim team, Lisa Remily. In lane three, last year's third place finisher, she attends Florida State University, Representing FSU, Lori Lehner. In lane four, the defending champion and American record holder has never lost a 50 freestyle to an American swimmer, has 14 national titles, a junior at the University of Texas, representing Longhorn Aquatics, Jill Sterkel. In lane five, Last year's sixth place finisher, a high school freshman from Beverly Hills, California, swimming for the Tandem Swim Club, Dara Torres. In lane six, the third place finisher in the 100-yard freestyle, a sophomore at Auburn University, swimming for the Bartow Imperial Flyers, Annie Left. In lane seven, making her first appearance in a championship finals, a high school freshman from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, swimming for the Fort Lauderdale swim team, Paige Zemina. And in lane eight, the eighth place finisher in the 50 meter freestyle at last year's long course championships, a senior at the University of Missouri, swimming for the Jefferson County Swim Club, Susan Tijan. The old and the new lane four, Jill Sterkel never having lost to an American swimmer to your left, to the right, 14-year-old Dara Torres. She has a unique starting method. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Start is very crucial. Let's watch it. Dara got off first. Start is about 30% of this race. The turn is about another 30%, and then, of course, swimming. And Dara is out in front, and she's hitting the wall first. Dara Torres at the bottom of your screen at the center two lanes. But Jill Sterkel's a strong finisher if there is such a thing in a 50-yard race. Sterkel in the orange cap, Torres in the, in the white cap. It is Torres now. Torres and Sterkel. Sterkel's record might end here. Torres. This is close. It is Dara Torres of the Tandem Swim Club. Jill Sterkel has been upset. Look at Torres. Look at that expression. She did it. She ended Jill Sterkel's hold on this event. She hasn't lost a 50-yard freestyle event to an American swimmer ever. And now Dara Torres has done it. Terry Palmer, her coach from the Culver City, California Tandem Swim Club is right there. There's his back. She is ecstatic. That is unbelievable. Jill Sterkel had such a luck on that race. There's her there time. There it is. 22-44, 3-100s off the American record. Jill Sterkel is just so invincible with her size in that event, her experience. That's not an easy win for an inexperienced swimmer in that event. That's not an easy event, I meant to say. Jill is just such a strong swimmer. It, that is a major upset. That is truly a remarkable swim. I, th I think Sterkel was, was crushed by it. She just walked out of the water. It was Annie Leth that walked over and congratulated Dara Torres. Let's watch it, her unique start here. See how one foot, the left foot is in front of the right, sort of like a track start. That is legal. 
Watch her get off now. And she got off well ahead of anybody else in the pool. She had the lead at the turn and she held it from coast to coast with a victory. As she's warming down, let's watch the remainder from high above. She hits her turn well. Just a shade ahead of Sturkle. Sturkle with her strength and her size turns well. As she comes in, she'll lower her head and come on real strong and just barely touch out Jill Starkle by two one hundredths. Sturkle in the orange cap. Leandra, just to give you an idea of Jill Sturkle's dominance, Jill was on our 4 by 100 gold medal relay team in the 1976 Olympics. She's been on top that long. But now there's someone Maybe new. Maybe it's the end of an era. I've <laughs> so 14-year-old Dara Torres is standing by with Chuck Samuels. Dara, you've beaten the queen of the American 50. You've got to feel good at this point. I really do. I was really, I was really trying to get her. I, she, she's been winning all the 50s. I just wanted to get her. All right, we'd like to take a look at the replay. We'd like for you to call a race if you could. It looked like you were really off the start well. You'd beaten Jill right there. All right, we're going to see the finish of the race right here if you watch the monitor. You're right ahead of her. Go ahead. What were you thinking right here at this point? I got to get her. I got to get her. <laughs> Did you know she was uh, ahead of you here or behind you? Well, I sort of looked. That's my habit. I sort of looked to see where people are, and I was just trying to keep my head down and just finish as hard as I could, can. So you had no idea you finished first until you touched, right? Right. <laughs> Looked like you were pretty happy yeah, right there. I'm really proud. I'm really happy. I worked really hard for it. Well, congratulations, Dora. Thank you. Dara, winner of the 50. Women's final in the 50-yard freestyle, Dara Torres upsetting Jill Sterkle. Jill Sterkle, 20 years old, finishing second. Dara Torres, who was only 14, finishing first. Lori Lehner came in third. Now the fastest event for the men, the 50-yard freestyle. U.S. Open and American record is held by a man who will be swimming right now, Robin Leamy, 19.36. His time set in 1981. Chuck Samuels, please tell us our lane assignments. Swimming in the championship of the men's 50-yard freestyle. In lane number one, the former American record holder in the 50-meter freestyle. He attended the University of California at Santa Barbara, swimming for the Tandem Swim Club, Bruce Stahl. In lane two, a freshman at the University of Texas, representing Longhorn Aquatic, John Pohl. In lane three, the seventh place finisher in the 100 meter backstroke at the last year's Long Course Championship, a high school senior from Collinsville, Illinois, swimming for the Parkway Swim Club, Tom Yeager. In lane four, the American record holder and defending champion, a senior at UCLA, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Robin Leamy. In lane five, a native of Singapore and a sophomore at the University of Houston, representing Houston, Shong Ang. In lane six, a member of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team, representing Santa Clara, Chris Kavanaugh. In lane seven, winner of the 100 and 200 yard freestyles, World record holder in the 100 and 200 meter freestyles, swimming for the War Eagle swim team, Rowdy Gaines. And in lane eight, a junior at the University of California at Santa Barbara, representing the Santa Barbara Swim Club, Ken Neff. Robin Leamy, the NCAA champion, American record holder, probably with the best start in the world. He gets off better than anyone. His top challenger in lane seven, Rowdy Gaines. Rowdy, a three-time All-American in the NCAA meet, already has won the 100 and 200 freestyles in this meet. The start is ever so important in this race. This is the most difficult event for the meet starter to get off successfully. Let's watch it very carefully. Had a little bit of problem with lane number four. They had to tighten the starting block, but evidently everything's secured now, so the men have been called to the block, and our starter, I believe, is ready to take control. Lane three, six, and seven all went in the water. They had a lot of problems getting the 50 freestyle going into trials, a lot of false starts. Rowdy Gaines went in that time, Chris Cavanaugh went in. 
That time also going in Tom Yeager. Robin Leamy is now in the driver's seat. Robin Leamy has an excellent start. The starter in a championship final will be very reluctant to have them come back up for fear someone will go in a second time and be DQ'd as you look at some of the field, including Leamy. Robin Leamy, here's where he's in the advantage. He has an effective start. Everybody else is gonna be cautious. They don't wanna go in a second time, especially Gaines. Leamy is right now in great shape. And the last one off the block was lane number six, Chris Cavanaugh. He had a delayed reaction there, but out in front is lane number four, Robin Leamy, the defending champion in this event. And off the wall first is Robin Leamy in the center of your screen. He is swimming without a cap, but lane five, Chong Eng, University of Houston, is right beside him. Chong Eng coming on strong, but Leamy might have just touched him. He did not. Oh, it was Chong Eng. University of Houston placed fourth in this event at the recent NCAA champion, the native of Singapore, recruited by Houston. He is a sophomore there, congratulating the other lanes. There it is this time, Sean Ng, 19.86. The American record was 19.36. Not quite a mark, he's, he's hugging his coach right now. Sean Yang from the University of Houston. Phil Hansel, that may very well have been his first national champion, and he's all excited from Houston, Sean Ng doing very well. Let's watch the turn in the last lap because Leamy got a great start, got out ahead. He turns first, but the whole second lap is Shang Eng as he comes off extremely strong in the turn. Gaines had a good turn too, but look at Shang just muscle his way in the middle of the pool. Coming up strong, Shang up the top of the screen in the white cap. Leamy tries to lunge here, but he's two 100s too late. Shang Eng, University of Houston, finished first in the event. His time, 19.86. Second place went to the defending champion, Robin Leamy. Sean Ng, incidentally, is 19 years old. Robin Leamy is 21. Third place went to John Cole of the Longhorn Aquatic Club. He, too, is 19 years of age. And we have more swimming still coming up. You're listening to Brian Gordon and Leander Ryan. Friday. The ESPN cameras will be focusing on the Lakewood Country Club in New Orleans when ESPN will televise for the first time live a PGA golf tournament, the New Orleans Open. Be sure to catch those first three rounds live coverage beginning Thursday, April 22nd, 3 p.m. Eastern. And then you can watch it again on Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And the third round on Saturday, April 24th, 2 p.m. Eastern. And there'll be a tape delay on the final round Sunday, April 25th. Let's get back to swimming now. We're ready for the 1650 Women's Freestyle Event. U.S. Open and American record is Kim Linehan, 1549-10. Chuck Samuels, let's see where they're swimming. Swimming in the final heat of the women's 1650-yard freestyle. In lane one, last year's ninth place finisher, a high school senior from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Natadores, Jocelyn Thomas. In lane two, last year's seventh place finisher, a high school sophomore from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Natadores, Florence Barker. In lane three, Last year's fourth place finisher. Second place finisher at the NCAA championships, a sophomore at Stanford, representing the Starlet Aquatic Club, Sherry Hanna. In lane four, the defending champion and American record holder, world record holder at 1,500 meters, won this event at the AIAW championships, a sophomore at the University of Texas, swimming for the Longhorn Aquatic Club, Kim Lenahan. In lane five, the winner of the 500 and 1,000 yard freestyles earlier in the meet, a high school sophomore from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Mission Viejo Natadores, Tiffany Cohen. In lane six, last year's sixth place finisher, a high school senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, swimming for the Pepsi Marlins, Nancy Nemeth. In lane seven, last year's eighth place finisher, a high school senior from Altadena, California, swimming for the Industry Hills Aquatic Club, Laura Camposano. And in lane eight, last year's 10th place finisher, a high school senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, swimming for the Pepsi Marlins, Lori Strong. We have two real threats in this race. In lane four, Kim Linehan. She's the defending champion, American record holder. And in lane five, Tiffany Cohen of Mission Viejo. Tiffany has already won the 500 and 1,000 yard freestyles and so far has been the distance swimmer for the women in this meet. And so young, too. Tiffany Cohen is just a sophomore in high school, 15 years of age.
this is a long race, Leandra. It takes a long time, more so than the 500 and 1,000 for race strategy to set up, so to speak. Linehan and Cohen are similar swimmers, though, and we'll get into that a little bit later on, how they like to let some other people set the pace, and then they like to get into their race around the six, seven, eight hundred yard points and really come on strong at the end. As Brian pointed out, Kim Linehan swimming in the orange cap. Tiffany Cohn, you're looking at Linehan now. Tiffany Cohn in the blue cap in the center of your pool. And right now, our Chuck Daniels is standing by with the coach of one of our swimmers out there at the University of Texas, Longhorn Aquatic, Paul Bergen, coach of Kim Linehan. With me is Coach Bergen. He's the coach of Kim Lenahan, the defending champion swimming in lane four. But Coach, you've had a chance to see the other swimmers compete as well. Can you compare their race strategies? How do they like to swim their races? Well, most of them are all pretty much the same. I think uh, the thing that Tiffany Cohn has done really, really well throughout the meet is work exceptionally well in the middle of her races. And uh, Kim in the 1,000 let Tiffany slide in the 5th and 6th 100s. And today they're just going to have to work the whole race for the whole 15 minutes. We've only got two college competitors. Mary Beth Linsmeyer, the NCAA champion, is scratched. Do you feel that the college season has had an effect on some of the distance swimmers? I think, yeah, I think what we'll find is that it has a, like a more negative effect in the longer races than the shorter races and a little harder to hang on for the 1650 or 1000 or 500 than it might be for the, uh, say, the 200 or 100 events. Okay, thank you, Coach. Let's go back up to Leandra Riley and Brian Gordon. As we said earlier that the record of this event is 1549, Kim Linehan and Tiffany Cohn both touched their 100-yard split at 56-39, 56-45. So they're about two seconds off any kind of record pace. Our leader right now is Kim Linehan and Tiffany Cohn. I'd say Tiffany Cohn's out in front by maybe half a fraction. Early on, Nancy Nemeth in lane number six is putting some pressure on both Linehan and Cohn. That happened last night in the 500 earlier in the meet. Nancy's not going to have the strength, I don't think, to sustain it for the whole 66 laps. Kim Linehan looks stronger than I expected. She's staying right here with Tiffany Cohen. It could be interesting as the race develops. When you watch individuals like this train, you wonder what really can make an individual faster. Or well, Chuck Samuels explores some of the things that swimmers do to make them a little bit better than somebody else. When we talk about what makes swimmers go fast, first and foremost, we must talk about the training. Swimmers begin the season with the hard, long-distance training, the weight workouts, and the land exercises. Then as we move into the championship season, then comes the emphasis on the sprints and the race pace. Next, we talk about shaving. Most of you have seen shaved swimmers, the shaved heads and the shaved bodies. There's an argument as to whether this is physiological or psychological. I happen to believe it's both. The physical, physiological aspect, your body feels slicker, and it gives you that feeling that, like no other feeling that can be described unless you felt it. Your body feels slick in the water, and I think both physiological and psychological go together. Next are rub downs. Some swimmers like them, some don't. It usually depends on the individual and the coach as to whether they'll rub the muscles loose with a variety of wintergreen oils, etc. Next is the pool. Many pools now are using the triple lane line aspect. This reduces the turbulence between the lanes, cuts down on the swimmer's backwash from lane to lane. Also, gutters also make a fast pool. The gutters in today's faster pools suck up the water as it comes into the gutter, not allowing it to backwash into the pool. And then the most important element of a fast pool is the depth. The deep water keeps the waves from bouncing off the bottom of the pool and causes less friction and less turbulence uh, overall. Then probably another important aspect that many people overlook is the atmosphere of the pool. When you walk into a facility and see a pool such as the O'Connell Center or the Texas Swim Center in Austin or the new pool they're building in Indianapolis, you get a psyched up feeling that that pool is fast. It's a modern, ultra fast facility, not like the old gymnasium type natatoriums that we've seen in the past. So these are just some of the elements that make a swimmer fast. But what it really comes down to is the swimmer himself. If he's tough, he can do it no matter what the conditions. And right now, the condition of our race is after 500 yards, we are well off a record pace. But Nancy Nemeth swimming in lane six for the Cincinnati Pepsi Marlins is in front. Tiffany Cohn right now is second. Kim Linehan is third. And we'll be back with the conclusion of this 66 
length event right after this. The head coach of the Cincinnati Pepsi Marlins imploring on his young senior high school swimmer, Nancy Nemeth. 100 yards to go, a potential upset. Nemeth, who is originally from New York City, she left that area for better training in Cincinnati, challenging Tiffany Cohen in the blue cap. Nancy Nemeth and Tiffany Cohen have been neck and neck for all 1,600 yards of this race. The 1650, the 75 yards remaining. Cohen at the top of your screen. Red cap Nancy Nemeth at the bottom of your screen. And are they close? They're getting the gun lap right here. Nancy's working a little bit harder here to stay with Tiffany. Tiffany's experience might be the key. Now Tiffany's starting to move on a little bit. You see the lead ever so slight. This turn will decide the race. Whoever hits this turn better wins the race. The crowd is on their feet. They are cheering them on. Everybody is waving their arms as soon as they become visible to them. It's amazing. Cohen is just really kicking it out. And Nancy Nemet is digging deep, but she can't find anything. Cohen, you are right, has just got the experience and brought it home for the gold. The crowd ecstatic that they get a race here. A standing ovation. Tiffany wins her third event of this championship, but Nancy Nemeth is the one you got to applaud. Nancy's been a good swimmer. She just became, Leandra, a great swimmer. She'll be going to Arizona State next fall and a great distance program there under Bob Gillett, and she really got a lot of experience. Here's Tiffany, her winning time, 15, 58, 92, and there's a little bit disappointed Nancy Nemeth, but let me tell you, she has nothing to be disappointed about. No, she certainly doesn't. Again, the winning time, 15.58.52. Tiffany Cohn, the winner. Nancy Nemeth finishing second with a 15.59.44. And lane three, Sherry Hanna finishing third with a 16.06.33. And I think this race really took a lot out of Tiffany Cohn. She's warming down. Let's take another look at how it wound up. Again, the turn was the key, and Tiffany seemed to hit the turn a little bit better and that accounted for the advantage she has in going into the final five yards. She puts down her head, and look at the difference, about a yard after 1,650 yards. Truly remarkable swim by Tiffany and Nancy. Less than a second. So Tiffany Cohn defeated Nancy Nemeth in the 1650. Cohn first, Nancy Nemeth finishing second, and Sherry Hanna of the Charlotte Aquatic Club finished third. Winning time, 1558-52. We'll be back with more swimming. We have the backstroke still to come. The American record for this event is 49.08, set by Clay Britt in 1981. And Chuck Samuels, if you'll tell us where the young men are swimming. Swimming in the championship of the men's 100-yard backstroke. In lane one, the seventh place finisher in the 100-meter backstroke at last year's long course championship, a high school senior from Collinsville, Illinois, representing the Parkway Swim Club, Tom Yeager. In lane two, the American record holder and three-time NCAA champion in this event, a junior at the University of Texas, swimming for the Longhorn Aquatic Club, Clay Britt. In lane three, he recently broke the national high school record in this event, a high school senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, swimming for the Pepsi Marlins, Mark Rodenbaugh. In lane four, the second place finisher at the recent NCAA championship, a freshman at Stanford, swimming for the Walnut Creek Aqua Bears, Dave Bottom. In lane five, the winner of this event at last year's championships, American record holder in the 200-yard backstroke, a freshman at the University of Texas, swimming for the Badger Swim Club, Rick Carey. In lane six, winner of the 200-yard I Am earlier in the meet, a senior at Southern Illinois, Roger Von Juan. In lane seven, last year's seventh place finisher, a freshman at Southern Methodist, swimming for Mission Viejo, Jay Yared. And in lane eight, the fifth place finisher at last year's championship, a junior at the University of California at Berkeley, swimming for the Cincinnati Pepsi Marlins, Dave Wilson. A wide open field all the way from lane one through lane eight. Clay Britt in lane two is the American record holder, a junior at the University of Texas. He's won the NCAA title the last two years. Clay has a great start, perhaps one of the best backstroke starts in the world. If he's going to be a factor, he's going to be out there the first 25. One of the best turners backstroke-wise, Leandra, is in lane five. There he is, Rick Carey. He's a freshman at the University of Texas. He holds the American record at 200 yards backstroke. 
He's won three straight national titles dating back to Cambridge of last year. He's a great turner. Mark Rodenbaugh in lane number three set a national high school record this year, breaking the record held by Dave Wilson, his Cincinnati teammate in lane eight. Finally, Dave Bottom in lane four, one of the Bottom brothers, as we mentioned earlier, had the fastest time earlier and was second at the NCAAs. It's interesting that the backstrokers have the advantage of getting in the water since they start in the water, but they virtually swim all the way down the pool. They almost warm up. Once again, to rehash, from the top of your screen to the bottom, one being at the top, eight at the bottom, it is Jaeger in one, Britt in two, Rodenbaugh three, bottom four, Kerry five, Roger Von Juan in lane six, Yared in lane seven, and Dave Wilson in lane eight. 100 back should be interesting. It appears that most of the swimmers, as you're looking at Dave Bottom, the youngest of the three Bottom brothers that have been involved in swimming, uniquely enough, Mike and Joe, the two older ones, went to USC. Dave's now at Stanford, and that was a bit of a controversy a year ago, why he didn't follow in the footsteps of his two older brothers. He starts up above, as does Jay Yared in late number seven, and Mark Rodenbaugh in late number three. The rest will pull up from the water. A tremendous start in lane number two, and look how well he got out there, but so did Mark Rodenbauer in three, and Dave Bottom in lane four. So it is still after 25 yards, any man's race. They will swim four lengths of the pool, back throw. Early leader right now, I'd have to say, it looks like Rodenbauer coming out of that turn. Rodenbauer was second earlier in the 200 IM, is an excellent backstroke. If he hits his all his turns, he'll definitely be there along with lane number one, Tom Yeager, a senior from Parkway in Illinois. And he's in the lead right now in lane number one. Bottom and Rodenbaugh and Carey in the center of your pool. All three seem to be going in the wall together. Right now, I'd have to say it is Carey who came out a little earlier. Carey and Rodenbaugh, lane four and five in a tight battle. Dave Bottom in lane four, Rick Carey in lane five. And it is Dave Bottom finishing first for lane four. 48-94 is the time. That is a new record. That is a sensational swim for the freshman from Stanford. He's getting a standing ovation. No one here really thought that we'd see a record fall. The men have not been swimming in this meet with the exception of Prado on record pace. Dave Bottom, really, there's the American record time, 48.94, over one full tenth under Clay Britt's record. He did a super job there. And Clay Britt in lane two looks a little dejected as he saw his record fall. But the new record holder now, as you just witnessed right here, Dave Bottom, 48.94 his time. I think he's more concerned about getting oxygen than he is about uh, enjoying the, the victors or the spoils of his victory. Second bottom brother to hold the record. Joe, for a long time, held the American and world record of the 100 fly, and now Dave's the record holder in the backstroke as he's starting to warm down a little bit. He had his turns exceptionally well. He's got to, if he ever looks back at this race on film or anything, he's got to give his third turn. Third turn, exceptional consideration. Let's watch how he goes in. Mark Rodenbauer, Rick Carey, right with him. Watch him go in, and look at that leg kick and the drive he gets out. He went out almost five full yards there. And look at him pick up on Carey. Look at how much he pulled ahead of Rick Carey, who was known before, at least this race, as one of the best turners in the world. Rodenbauer is at the top, bottom is in the middle. They're out in front, and then Carey's at the bottom of your screen. So you can see Dave Bottom just pulling away. Came in real strong, touched the pad strong, 48-94, U.S. Open and American record. And now Dave Bottom has concluded his warm down. He's standing by, or sitting by, I should say, with Chuck Samuels. Dave, you got the American record tonight. You beat the NCAA champ. It's got to be sweet revenge. It, it felt nice. It really did. I uh, would have rather had it happen in NCAAs, but, but this is fine. <laughs> did you feel you might be on the American record coming home that last 25? Actually, I, I didn't. I didn't think so. I, 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 that was my goal, but, but I didn't think I was there. Nice surprise. <laughs> Very good. Congratulations, American record for Dave Bottom. 48-94, a record time for Dave Bottom in the 100-yard backstroke event. Bottom the winner, Rick Carey finishing second, Mark Rodenbaugh of the Pepsi Marlins finishing third. We'll be back with more swimming, women's 100-yard breaststroke, still to come from Florida event is none other than Mary T. Maher, and she shared with us earlier her strategy for the 100 fly. Um, tonight, there's no probably prime competition. There's 
quite a few others, um, four of us that were in the 53 range. And um, it's just going to be, I think, whoever can put their start together and, and hit the turns right, at least for me, that's how it's, it's going to be. If, if I can hit my turns and um, if even on the first 25 I can hold my stroke together, then um, I'm, I think I'll be right in there. Mary T. Maher, you are watching her as she thinks about probably what she just told us. And Chuck Samuels is standing by to tell us that not only is Mary T. in lane six, but where the other swimmers are at. Swimming in the championship of the women's 100-yard butterfly in lane number one, the fifth-place finisher in the 200-yard IM, a high school sophomore from Austin, Texas, swimming for the Longhorn Aquatic Club, Karen Wirth. In lane two, swimming for West Germany, Karen Sykes. In lane three, the third-place finisher at this event at last year's championship for Florida State University, Laurie Lehner. In lane four, the defending champion and American record holder, a junior at the University of Texas, swimming for the Longhorn Aquatic Club, Jill Sterkel. In lane five, last year's short course rookie of the year, a high school sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, representing the Jewish Community Center sailfish, Melanie Buttemeyer. In lane six, last year's second place finisher, world record holder in the 100 and 200 meter butterflies, a high school junior who will enroll in college next year from Louisville, Kentucky and the Lakeside Swim Club, Mary T. Maher. In lane seven, placed second to the 200 yard butterfly, a high school junior from Nashville, Tennessee, swimming for the Nashville Aquatic Club, Patty King. And in lane eight, making her first appearance in a United States Swimming National Championship, a freshman at Auburn from Westchester, Pennsylvania, and the Westchester Swim Club, Carolyn Goodley. In lane four, Jill Sterkel representing Longhorn Aquatics in the University of Texas. Last year, she beat Mary T. Maher by one one hundredth of a second. Why? Perhaps because of her size and strength. She turns exceptionally well in short course races. Also, earlier, as you saw, she lost the 50 freestyle. She might have a little bit of revenge on her mind. Jill Sterkel is the American and U.S. Open record holder for 100 yards butterfly. Maher at 100 meters. 52.99 American record mark. Two other girls to watch. Lane 5, Melanie Buttermeyer, second last summer. She's a good sprint flyer. Lane 7, Patty King of Nashville having a great meet. She was third in the 200. She's even better in the 100. Maher got off real well on the block, but so did Sterkel. The first turn could be an indication, Lee, of how this race might shape up. Jill Sterkel in the center of your pool with the orange cap right now touching first, I have to say, but really close is Lori Lehner next to her in the yellow cap. Let's not discount anybody in the field, though. They are all very, very close. Light advantage still to Sterkel. Sterkel really worked that turn well. Let's watch this one again. Sterkel in the orange cap turning. Look at how she pulls away from the rest of the field, including Maher there. The clock didn't appear to stop at the 50 point, but Jill Sterkel is opening up a lead, and if she hits this turn, she's not going to be able to be caught. Let's watch her come off the wall. Look at how much of an advantage she got there. So Sterkel's just pulling away from the pack, and now if she can hang on to that advantage, we have a race going on for second place, and it looks to me like Mary T. Maher is coming on the She might challenge Sterkel. No, I'd have to say it is Sterkel who finished first, and Mary T. who finished second. Our clock says 53.20 53.20 for Sterkel. 53.22 for Mary T. Last year it was one one hundredth of a second. This year it's two one hundredths of a second. And that was a carbon copy of the race in Boston. Mary T made the move the last 10 yards. Just too little, too late. There's Jill Sterkel. She's got to be happy. But just like last year, Mary T just a little bit short. Lane six, Mary T Maher. Almost disbelieving in her performance there. She thought she had her at the end. She's, she's obviously disappointed. She's swimming over now to congratulate Jill Sterkel on her performance. And Chuck Samuels is going to stop Mary T from congratulating her. Take it away, Chuck. Let's hear Jill's reaction. Jill, you're the defending champion. You put off a good fight on uh, Mary T. And uh, some of the others were catching you pretty quick. You held them off, though. You have to feel good. Yeah, I feel all right. You swim the 50. It's an all-out sprint. Do you swim the 100 uh, fly the same way? 
pretty much. I just try and get out, and then what I have left, I just try to bring it back with. I mean, it's pretty much an all-out sprint. Well, congratulations on your win. Defending her title, Jill Sterkel in the 100-yard butterfly. So Jill Sterkel, who couldn't quite do it in the 50, certainly brought it home in the 100-yard butterfly. Her time, once again, was a 53.2. Second place by 200th of a second. Behind Sterkel was Mary T. Maher. Third place was the 53.46, Lori Lehner. Now we are ready for the men's 100-yard butterfly, American and U.S. Open record held by Scott Spann, 47-22. Swimming in lane one will be Bruce Foster, lane two, Andrew Wen, lane three, Jim Halliburton, lane four, David Cowell, lane five, Craig Beardsley, lane six, Chris Rives, seven, Bob Playsack, eight, Pablo Morales. Craig Beardsley, University of Florida senior in lane five, known more for the 200 fly where he holds the world and American record, both short course and long course. Not known for the short race, he qualified second. Look for lane four, Dave Cowell, the Big Ten champ. And lane six, high school senior Chris Rives to be the top competitors for Beardsley. All right, off the start it is. Craig Beardsley definitely out in front, but not by much. Strongest challenger right now is Bob Playsack in lane seven. And lane number four, Dave Cowell. Dave Cowell is about six feet, six inches, and he'll use that size to an advantage as he's getting out early. Beardsley's smaller, and he'll try and come on in the end. It appears to me that Beardsley is getting caught in the wake of uh, Cowell there. Cowell is just moving a body length ahead of Beardsley. Cowell's ahead of Scott Spann's record pace at the 50, and it'll be a key on this turn as he's way out ahead of the field. No one really chasing him. This turn is a key, although he got tied up on the wall, and here comes Beardsley. So if Cowell can bring it home, he could set a new mark. Our clock shows 41. The time he wants to beat is 47-22. It is still Cowell and Beardsley. Cowell out in front, strictly by a half a body length. His Probably his height advantage over Beardsley. Cowell wins at 47-89. Not a new mark. 47-22 was the mark he wanted to better. But Dave Cowell the winner nonetheless. I think you called it right, Leandra, just as they came to the finish, the height advantage. Six feet, six inches tall for Dave Cowell, about Craig Beardsley's 5'10 or 5'11. He used his height to his advantage. Great swim by Dave Cowell, who really came out of nowhere this year as a freshman at Ohio State, Big Ten champion, runner-up to Matt Dribble at the NCAAs. Also a great swim for Craig Beardsley, not known primarily for his sprinting ability. It is a happy Dave Cowell. Beardsley in the orange cap just below him. One of the keys was Dave Cowell's turns, although his last turn, you'll see him get a caught a little bit on the wall, and Craig Beardsley made a real strong turn. Let's watch Cowell coming into the turn. Watch him kind of fumble. His hand slipped. He didn't get off well right there. He got off there, used his size to an advantage. Here comes Beardsley, a little smaller, but making a strong run. Cowell has a long stroke. Craig's taking twice as many strokes. He's a little shorter. Starting to cut it into the lead as he's pulling into the final five yards. But Cowell, again, stretching out touches in the time it took Craig to take two strokes. And it almost appeared in the beginning when Cowell exploded so far out in front that Beardsley really got caught in the way. There's our final. David Cowell, Craig Beardsley, Chris Rives. Cowell, our winner. His time, 47-89. Gainesville, Florida. United States Swimming is conducting this meet, and their executive director, Ray Essek, told us about his concerns about the continued success of swimming. Traditionally, the short course championships have been thought of as a showcase for the younger talent. Many of the older swimmers peak for their college championships, and many of them skip this meet altogether. With me is the executive director of United States Swimming, Ray Essek. Ray, is this a trend that we can see in these championships and other short course championships in the future? I think that this meet is gaining uh, in stature now that United States Swimming has uh, really put uh, a great deal more uh, play into it and the strength of our clubs has helped a great deal. The other thing we're seeing is an increase in the age of the women swimmers because I think that women's intercollegiate swimming has finally arrived. Is this the same trend that we can see in the long course championships in the summer? Well, we'll usually see a circumstance in the summer where uh, the age of the boys will raise a little bit. The age of the girls usually pretty much stays the same. In the summer, the college boys are ready to race and haven't put all of their energies into the collegiate program. Ray Essek commenting on United States swimming, and we've got some swimmers standing by right now for the 1650 freestyle. Brian Goodell set the mark in 1979, 14, 47, 27, a record that's been standing for almost three years. Chuck? Swimming in the final heat of the men's 1650 yard freestyle in lane number one. Winner of the 500 and 1,000 yard freestyles earlier, a high school junior from Upland, California, representing Industry Hills Aquatic Club, Jeff Kostoff. In lane two, 
the fourth place finisher last year, a high school junior from Mission Viejo, California, swimming for the Mission Viejo Nadadores, Roger Madruga in lane three. The third place finisher in both the 500 and 1,000 yard freestyles, a freshman at UCLA, swimming for Mission Viejo, Bruce Hayes. In lane four, the NCAA champion in this event in 1981, a native of Spain and a sophomore at UCLA, Rafael Escalas. In lane five, the NCAA champion in the 500-yard freestyle. He attends Arizona State University, swimming for Mission Viejo, Andy Asbury. In lane six, the second place finisher and the 1,000 yard freestyle, a junior at Columbia University, Tony Corbicero. In lane seven, a junior at the University of California at Berkeley, swimming for Mission Viejo, Bill Schmidt. And in lane eight, the fifth place finisher at the 1,000 yard freestyle, a high school junior from Memphis, Tennessee, swimming for the Memphis State Swim Club, Paul Budd. Lane one, a heavy favorite, High school junior Jeff Kostoff representing Industry Hills. If anyone can give him a race, it's lane three. UCLA freshman Bruce Hayes representing Mission Viejo. But really, no more than probably a two-swimmer race in this field. The strategy on this, Leander, as far as Jeff Kostoff is concerned, according to his coach, Don Lamont, let the first 800 take care of itself, really bring it hard the last 850. Coincidentally, that's the strategy for coaches Mark Schubert and Ron Ballatory for Bruce Hayes. 66 lengths of the pool, and after almost 50 yards, it is lane six that is out in front, Tony Carbacero. Touching second is lane one, Jeff Kostoff, and third place would have to be Rafael Escalas swimming in lane four. Tony Corbacero, a junior at Columbia University, used to swim for mission. He used to like to get out fast and used to tire himself out. He changed his strategy to be what they call a negative splitter. Worked the second half better than the first. Now he's gone back to his old habit and he's playing sort of the rabbit. Maybe he's gonna try out and get out and hide on Jeff Kostoff swimming in lane one. And really establishing a quick pace here is Tony Corbacero. He's just breaking away from the pack. Kostoff probably the closest man to him. I don't know if he's swimming his own race or if he's a well of Corbacero's situation out there, but Corbacero's really pulling away from the field as is Kostoff now. And then it seems like there's about four swimmers in the center of your pool that are settled in for third place. So there's a race right now between Corbacero and Kostoff as we touch after 100 yards. It appears that American distance swimming might be something that youngsters are taking advantage of. Co cost of 17. Paul Budd in lane eight who's hanging up there is only 16 years old from the Memphis State Swim Club. As you look at these American swimmers who are probably wondering how do they fare in the world? Well, Coach Schuber, head coach of the U.S. team for the World Games, shared his thoughts with us on that. This summer, the United States will be returning to the international scene of sorts for the first time in four years, really, as they go back to Ecuador for the World Aquatic Championships. And with the boycott in 1980, the U.S. Uh, not going to the Olympics, Mark, do you feel we might have gone stale from international competition? I feel that it's definitely hurt our top-level competitors not having competed in 1980. I think that they need that motivation of a major championship, and many of them haven't had it since 78. I also feel, however, that there are some new young up and comers that haven't competed internationally in a major meet, and they'll be real excited about this upcoming event. Where do we stand? Uh, every four years we, we hear as we go into the Olympics, there's some area they're trying to attack about American swimming. First it was the women, the East German women were so much superior to us. Now it appears to be the distance swimming program in the United States, and unbelievably so with the men. Do you feel there is a problem there, or do you feel that we're going to be most competitive in that area? Well, I think the main problem with our male distance program is Vladimir Solnikov of the Soviet Union. He's been very dominant the last three years. Uh, he just broke three world records in a one-month period of time, and we really haven't seen anyone coming up since Brian Goodell. Now with Jeff Kostov's uh, fantastic performances in the distance events, maybe we have a little bright spot on the horizon. Coach Schubert looking now for some 
serious performances out of the distance workers for the United States. Of course, he's the coach at Mission Viejo. And let me bring you up to date now. The swimmers have swum about 15 laps, and out in front still is Tony Corbacero, second place, Jeff Costa, and Andy Asbury is bringing up third place. This event is about 15 minutes long, and we're going to continue swimming during this commercial break and update you when we come back. In May, about eight laps remaining in the men's 1650. You are watching Jeff Kostoff, our current leader. He is on his 59th lap at this juncture. Closest in pursuit is Tony Corbacero in lane six. And third place right now is currently a toss up between Andy Asbury and Bruce Hayes. Jeff Kostoff swimming all by himself. He's off record pace. He's averaging 53.8 to 54.2 seconds per 100. He is off Brian Goodell's pace. One of the things Goodell had going for him when he went 1447 was a guy by the name of Bobby Hackett. Hackett pushed him the entire way to his record. Kostoff is doing this all by himself. He is off record pace, but this will be his third individual victory. He's won the 500, the 1,000, and now the 1650. Truly remarkable for this young man, just like Tiffany Cohen did in the women's events. There are swimmers going in each direction. Kostoff has set such an amazing pace that he has lapped many members of the field. But the person on the same lap with him is Tony Corbisero, his closest competitor, who already is almost a full length behind him. So Jeff Kostoff, way ahead of the field. Time right now, 13.59 for his last split. And only a couple hundred yards remaining. Or rather, 100 yards remaining. Go ahead. Leander, very few people have broken the mythical 15-minute barrier. Goodell, of course, has done it. Bobby Hackett. Arnie Borgstrom of Alabama, Casey Converse of Alabama, Doug Town of Arizona. Only five different people have ever broken that mythical 15-minute barrier. This could be number six, and he's only 16 years old and a high school junior. That's what we got to watch for. Right now, he's going to go about 14.54, which will be the third fastest time in history, or fourth fastest time in history. And it looks like he's going to do it. Jeff Kossoff is bringing it home with our clock showing 14.44. He's only got about 10 yards remaining in this 16 50 event 1450 51 52 52 39 1452 39 an outstanding performance by Jeff Kostoff the winner of the 650 second fastest time all time that was super that is probably with his earlier record in the thousand possibly a truly remarkable meet for this young man the thousand and sixteen fifty coming in i don't think anyone expected him to win the events no less the times he did only one other man has ever gone faster that brian goodell with his 14 47 27 and he looks kind of tired but he's going to enjoy it it was well worth it i think he'll when he looks back at this maybe after a good night's sleep leandra 14 52 39 incredible for a second it looked like he's getting a good night's nice rest right there do you realize a year ago, he wasn't even in this meet. A year ago, he won this event at the Junior Nationals in Milwaukee. 12 months later, he's the national champ for everything and the second fastest time in history. Mark Schubert said he sees some young guys coming. This is one of them. Paul Budd, who finished in sixth place in lane number eight, is another one. Matt Zetlinski, who's not here at this meet, is another. We're going to be tough at 84. The Russian better watch out. <laughs> Jeff Kostoff, the winner in the men's 1650. Second place went to Tony Corbacero. Third place went to Roger Madruga. This has been an exciting meet, and we'll be back to recap all of the results, so stay tuned for Austin Gainesville. Well, we certainly have had some exciting competition in these 1982 Short Course National Championships. Brian Gordon, your comments. Anything that stood out above anything else in this competition? Well, a few things stood out, Leandra, in my mind. First of all, I came in a bit of a skeptic. We had a rough performance in January at the USS meet. Talking to coaches, they were a little concerned, a little concerned about the way our swimmers would perform looking ahead to the World Games. I think we're right on target. I think our young swimmers, as Mark Schubert alluded to during the broadcast in an interview, are going to be a key to our future. They're swimming fine. Our college veterans are providing enough leadership for our national program to give incentive to these young age group swimmers that are developing. I think we're going to be very tough in Ecuador this summer. I think without a doubt, we are the nation that beats still in swimming and certainly looking ahead to Los Angeles in 1984. Chuck Samuels, your closing thoughts. Well, I have to concur with Brian. Our younger swimmers certainly came through, as well as the older swimmers. The, coming off the college season, they did pretty well. I think the Americans will be there this summer, the World Championships, and they'll be there at 84. Chuck, I noticed that you have taken a seat. I guess we've exhausted you running around in your outstanding deck work. You got some great interviews. Well, Dara Torres, 
did an outstanding job winning the 50. Tracy Calkins, of course, becoming the best swimmer in the United States. Rowdy Gaines successfully came back from retirement. And, of course, we have to really congratulate our Rookie of the Year, Bev Acker. An outstanding start for a young lady from the Cape Coast Swim Club. For Brian Gordon, I'm Leandra Riley. Chuck Samuels, I'd like to thank you and Brian both saying so long from Gainesville, Florida and these U.S. Short Course Swimming National Championships. arrangements made through it flashing you can see it says record uh -huh. 12 seconds 30. now it should be taken yep recording is flashing is that okay there's the bar still there now let's push uh, there's a stopwatch it, uh, yeah it's not going up there yeah still there? Yeah. I thought it went off when... Well, I guess not. Let's see if it goes off now. Okay. Because I didn't think... And then, uh, this is no. Okay. Oh, I, I said I was talking to her about... No. I got down here and worked the video equipment into the car. Plugged in. in. Oh. Yeah, I heard Plugged the same thing you were too. Wall. Then you're sure to have... And then Monday and Tuesday, heavy labor for us. If you do operate yeah. by batteries around, still take this out. I'm trying yeah. to take it advantage of every little bit of sleep I can. Okay, I think I've got it. Let's uh, take this out. Right, here. Step, please. You can try it. Ted, Keller.
few years hunting with the tree lounge, and we've captured some of the most incredible white